that uh, that I get when when I read this book, because I do read it a lot, I assign it to people and I find myself using it a lot, is I feel like I'm hanging out with you because I hear your voice when I read your words. But the other thing is, it, it feels like you were interested in philosophy as a young as a young woman because you needed that in order to get you where you are today. Mm -hmm. And you needed to do theater because that was part of your path to get you here today. Mm -hmm. And you needed to have the crisis you had when you weren't given tenure because it got, you know, it's like all these wonderful accidents yeah. brought you here and, um, and, and, uh, and brought us all here as well, of course. But along the way, you have engaged in a way that many people don't. For example, you had that experience, visceral experience, it sounds like, in Vancouver, where you realized you didn't want to be a performer, mm -hmm. but you didn't quit improv. Mm -hmm. And I've known so many wonderful people I, I love who, mm -hmm. who no longer, who's tried it at some point, no longer do it. Mm -hmm. So what kept you on, kept, what kept you connected to this? Well, I think it's that um, deep down, what is, what is a passion mm -hmm. is to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. Um, I've always felt that being, having the privilege of sharing information or helping to draw something out of others, being in the teaching role to me is why, is why I was put on the planet. And that everything, what I learned is that it's not just the subject that you know that you teach. Your whole life is grist for the And that as soon as you um, welcome all of that, your failures, your screw-ups, the things, the paths that didn't seem to make any sense, or the weird directions, the things that really interest you that don't seem to apply to the career path you're on. If you see that all of it really is part of reality, it's, it's, what, it's what we as improvisers know, that everything's an offer. There's nothing outside of that. It's not everything mostly is an offer. Everything's an offer. So um, the, the sort of sour expression on my boss's face is, is an offer, and as well as something that is sweet and tantalizing and interesting to me. Um, and so I think that the older, the longer I taught, and the older I got, I'm very old now, 66, and I'm getting here and all of that. Um, uh, the older I got, the more I realized that um, what goes on in the classroom uh, is an improvisation. Uh, you go in with a kind of an idea, not even so much a plan, but maybe a, a, I tend to, my, my, my classes are on a um, three by five fluorescent card. There'll be a couple of notes to me about what I think I'm, what subject I might mm -hmm. look at. But then I look at who's in the room and what, what we need to do and, and work with that and play off of that given the resources of my life, which might include something from a, a Tai Chi class, or, a, or an art class, or a, or a piece of philosophy. I was a philosophy major, so um, all my life I've been sort of, I had a philosophical bent. And in fact, the, um, the reason I'm, I, I guess I'm most pleased about my little book is that it turned out to be the book of my heart, the book that I wanted to write, a little, a little, I wanted to be little, philosophy book about the meaning of improv. I didn't want to write a textbook about how to improvise or, uh, or what are the things you have to do to be on stage. But I wanted it to say what it says. What are some of the principles that we use um, that are underneath the work that can lead to wonderful theatrical scenes on stage, that it can also lead to um, hatching up a, a fight with a pal, something like that.